Fabula Mortis, where do you even begin? It has an intriguing concept, playing a first-person shooter in the world of fantasy and steampunk, blended together with unique characters and classes of sorts. And yet, despite the settings and themes to play with, Fabula Mortis is a lifeless first-person shooter that begs the question of why it exists, as the few positives are highly outweighed by the vast amount of negatives it has. It shows that a concept doesn't make the game, that while it got through the Steam Greenlight process, it doesn't live up the standards of game design and was overall an unpleasant experience. The game types are categorized into two types. There's Deathmatch, and there's King of the Hill, and then there's King of the Hill. Oh, wait, that's not accurate. It says King of the Hill, but it's actually a game of keep away, aka one person is king, and you want to kill them. You get points while being the king and killing other people. The team mode of that, Bodyguard, is a more accurate description. There's also a training day mode, which I have no idea what it's about. Everyone is the same character, people kill each other, it's deathmatch. It's just out of place. A red flag came up when it said single player on the store page. It has since been taken down, but note that. The game will put bots in your game if you so desire for a single player experience, but this game is meant to be played with real people, and that shows in the AI of the bots. The AI is some of the worst I've seen in a long while, and in all aspects of the AI as well. You'll constantly see AI get stuck in the environment, most of the time in the same places, unable to seemingly move until you knock them out. You can tell the algorithm that looks at the AI is pretty simplistic, as the AI is robotic in its turning, like it's scanning the line of sight like a security camera would. It's pretty pitiful. If you're going to put bots in a game like this to make a single player experience, they have to be slightly competent in order for that to work, or don't bother putting them in at all. The developer, Dead Ghost Interactive, seemingly only put it in to have the line of single player in the Steam store page, but it has been removed due to complaints. Now looking at the team oriented game types, in order for you to know that you're part of a team, you have to have different colors or different elements that indicate that you are on the same team, which they sort of do. The thing is it's a little bar above your character's model that's very hard to read over a distance, especially when you choose bright green as one of your text colors. There's simple ways to do this, a different color palette for the textures for the character models for example. Why not do this? There are five unique characters that you can start playing as. There's Vlad, the melee type class that can dash across the room with ease and getting close. There's Wolf, the pyro in the game, but has the ability to make traps by putting down oil and setting it on fire, as well as doing more damage from the back, so it seems. There's Rogue, the dual pistol wielder who can unleash all of her ammo in quick succession in one move. There's Rob, a cannon wielder who's slow, but can move through the air with a jetpack and can kill most anything in one hit. And then there's Alice, a machine gunner who can, among other things, drop a grenade on death and is the most balanced of all the classes. And herein lies an early problem. Balancing is a problem. It's even present when fighting just the bots. Alice and Rob seem to always stop the leaderboard, Rob in particular. He may be slow, but the thing is, is that his cannonball is a one-hit kill, and there are two classes that want to be close range, which makes it easy for him to kill if they get close. He doesn't turn slowly in terms of 360 degrees, so back attacks don't necessarily work. And even then, the fact that he can one-hit kill anything in his wake is a major factor. There's really no long-range class in this game that can counter him. Both gun-wielding classes, Alice and Rogue, are more middle-range with pistols and a machine gun. Now, now you can level up your character with coins and experience, however the powers seem a little bit overpowered, it can cause a bad dynamic between skilled and newer players. Let's also talk about some of the other game design aspects. There's no ammo packs in this game. You can get ammo off of enemy weapons if they're the same type, and there is a perk to allow you to get ammo from other people's weaponry, but otherwise there are ammo stations, locations where you can refill your ammo, but they are limited on the map. It's a little bit different from normal, and there were only a few occasions that I actually did run out of ammo, mostly with Rogue. I don't think camping in an that area would work very well, especially with the areas they choose. But if you're out of ammo and far away from one of those locations, well, you're sort of screwed. But there's a problem with the equivalent of health packs in this game. There are health mushrooms. The thing is, is that they pack up the health mushrooms. You get a lot of health mushrooms all in one area, and a lot more than the equivalent of one set of full health. It's more equivalent to three or four. This is a major problem in multiple ways. First of all, let's go into the fact that if you have a fight within these fields, it's going to be hilarious, as no one will die, with the exception of anyone facing Rob. Again, the one hit kill thing counterbalances everything everything else. In particular, I spent a good minute fighting a wolf, dancing around this field as we both picked up health mushrooms over and over again, unable to die, to the point where it seemed that mushrooms were respawning for us to pick it up again. So I took a look, and they take about five seconds for them to respawn. Now granted, you can pick them up even if you have full health, but if you stay within that field of health, you're going to be consistently getting it over and over again. So what does it make? It makes for natural camp zones, and in several cases, natural camping zones that didn't have that many methods to attack, heavy either having only two ways of entry or the like. With reading new 
renewable resources, a player that was reasonable enough in skill became a massive threat to deal with. What this game does horribly, and worse than many others than I've seen of its type, is teach the player on how its world and its characters work. For example, you'll pick up power mushrooms throughout your gameplay. Is there any indication of what these mushrooms do? Not at all. It's an icon. Is there a reference to these icons to maybe explain what it does? Again, not at all. You may figure it out at times what it does, but other times you'll be sitting there wondering what the power is actually doing, and then you'll try all sorts of shit in order to try to figure out what it is. The game feels unfinished. The only sounds present is the sound of gunfire and getting hit at times. Footsteps of your own are present, but not of other people. There's not even bigger things like taking damage from falling from a height sounds. Characters don't really have animations. They feel like lifeless dolls. Even when moving, they can seem unnatural at times. Sometimes it works like Vlad sprinting, but other times it's just awkward. But how about the controls? Well, at first, they're pretty awful. The mouse sensitivity is completely out of whack at first, as it takes a while to play around to get control of it. But even beyond that, there seems to be input registration problems. In some cases, my character lost abilities. The ability to shoot, the ability to run, for periods of time. It was lucky that the jump function still worked, so I could jump off the side of the airship, for example, to reset myself. This seemed to happen a lot with Wolf the Pyro in particular, but it happened with other characters, and at times I could get myself out of it, but with only smashing buttons or changing weapons if I had the ability to change. Are there any positives out of this game? Honestly, only a few. The four maps in question are reasonably varied, and while they aren't numerous in nature, they do provide vastly different styles and aesthetic. In fact, the aesthetic may be the only thing this game has going for it. The environments at times might have told a pretty cool story, if there was any story at all to tell. Character models are interesting, but that's about it. There's one thing that I can say about this game game, it shows the necessity of QA and playtesters. There apparently was a beta this game, and I wonder what the devs learned from it. What's even sadder is the fact that the game is in this shape right now, is apparently, based on what tweets and information I read on, this game was released at Gamersgate, not hashtag Gamergate, but at the Gamers Gate shop site on April 17th of 2014. It comes to the Steam store four months later looking like this and I question what the game has done during that time. And with absolutely no one playing online after all that time for what I saw, it's a telltale sign the game has problems. The developer seems to be responding though as a couple fixes have gone into place already, such as describing the power-ups in a text box. It's clear to me that based on the state of its launch and the issues of multiple levels of this game, that there was a major lack of quality for this title. It's a combination of the unbalanced classes, the controls that lock up on you, the missing basic elements of team-based shooters, was made clear that it wasn't considered during development. Every game has a positive that can come out of it. In the case of Fabula Mortis, we learned one thing, that a concept does not make a game. Hey everybody out there, my name is Sean Joy, aka Dragnix, and I'd like to thank TechRaptor for letting me do some content for them. You should go check out techraptor.net.